Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often reviewing rare and exotic whiskeys. But Jason, this is not a whiskey. Well, you're right. Buffalo Trace Distillery, White Dog, match number one, corn, rye, and malted barley recipe. 62.5% alcohol by volume. It's 125 proof. It says whiskey, distilled and bottled by Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky. Yay! Now, there actually is a wheat mash bill. Think W.L. Weller, think Pappy. There's a rye, think Zazarak, think um, T T Thomas H. Handy. Um, and there's mash bill one and mash bill two. So mash bill one would be more about here are, wow, I lost it. More about here, um, the products that are Eagle Rare, Old Charter, George T. Stagg, Normal Bourbon E.H. Taylor, Normal Stagg, Buffalo Trace, Benchmark 8, and so on. Mash Mill 2, Blantons. Now, Mash Mill 1 has less than 10% rye, we've been told. Mash Mill 2 has 12 to 15% rye. Now, um, I am going to pull out the Buffalo Trace. I'm going to pull out the Eagle Rare. Um, and see, and this is my purpose of this day, is to see if I can recognize the notes from the White Dog New Make um, in these products. Both of these are 45%. Um, the standard 0 0.7 liter bottle over here in Europe is 40%, but if you go to the Travel Retail 1 liter bottle, it's 45%. Yay! And this is the Eagle Rare 45 for many years, I said, hey, we've been privileged, buy bottles, bunker them, we're not going to have that privilege of Eagle Rare tenure for much longer. I was wrong. Now, I might be wrong once again because uh, Zazarak has canceled the agreement with the wholesaler in Germany, Devaza or Team Spirit, and um, they're going to do the distribution themselves. Zazarak, just like in Ireland just like now also here for Germany. And so that's what the story is behind this bottle. The Vaza Team Spirit have been basically cleaning out their um, warehouses of all the uh, Sazerac products and things are hitting the market. So this was sent to the German um, wholesaler Kirsch Import and I bought it there um, directly from them. This is an illegal bottle. I've mentioned this quite a few times. We're not, not allowed to have 750 milliliter bottles over in Europe, nor are we allowed to have 375 milliliter bottles. This was officially sold as a 350 milliliter bottle, even though it says 375 here. It's crazy, but we have a list of bottle sizes that are legal. The same thing is with America. Over here in Germany, I'm sorry, over here in Europe, we have quite a few, and especially in Germany, 0 0.5 liter bottles. Those are not allowed in America. And yet, almost all the new distilleries in Germany, there's dozens, if not hundreds, almost started, all of them started out using 0 0.5. So you can't charge more than 60 to 80 euros for a bottle of whiskey. And so what do you do? You don't fill it up in 0 0.7, you fill it up in 0 0.5, and you still charge 60 to 80 euros. Eh, that's not what we love as our consumer, but that's what happened. And so the same thing here. I like these smaller bottles, um, especially for me personally as a consumer in that case. These are just fantastic. I, do I really want a 0 0.75 of this in of the White Dog? Now, I've seen people actually take a cask, um, either take a brand new cask, brand new toasted, brand new charred, both toasted or charred, um, maybe 10 gallons, maybe five gallons, maybe three. I've seen all these different sizes of casks. I call them transformation. And what they'll do is maybe they will actually put a good port wine in there, leave it in there for six to six weeks to six months, or rum, or a uh, tequila, or red wine, or even I've seen stout and other types of finishes done with these casks. And then they poured the white dog in there. And so they matured their own whiskey. Now, um, you can do this with bourbon. Other people use 
Glen Fackler is 105 because that's 60% alcohol. This is 62%, 62.5% alcohol. It's at a price point where we can do it. Now, in the States, this used to cost $16. I paid over here in Germany for this 46 euros. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Not the cheapest product in the world. Now, I would love to try the... I have tried, actually. Um, I've tried. I was in Buffalo Trace, and there was a tasting. There was um, Somewhere there was a tasting I did with the... Um, Normal, um, mash bill number one, the wheated, and there's a rye, all in white dog. Very, very nice. I wish we had more of this over here in Germany to experiment with. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this, and I'm going to try these, and then I'm going to go back to this after I put some water in and see if I can identify the flavors that come from the new make. And therefore, try to analyze, conclude what flavors are from the cask. Now, I've done this, I have here German single malt um, new make. I have here from the same distillery a um, German single malt straight from the, I, I don't know if you can see this or not. I pulled this straight from the cask myself, and there's a lot of um, barrel char in there. I'm going to have to filter that out. Um, and to see what happens. And my theory is, my hypothesis is, and this is something I've just for me today realized doing it in my German video is the change from new make from single malt to single malt whiskey is more than the change from white dog to bourbon. Now the only, <laughs> I'm trying to do this here. So white dog to bourbon, the only thing that happens is age and oak, new charred oak barrels. The change between um, new make and single malt whiskey is often used barrels and time, age. And I think the difference between the new make spirit by single malt and the product we buy in the bottle is much different than the white dog, the new make here from a corn based bourbon white dog compared to the finished product. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. Um, I have not put a lot of thought into this. It's just my first initial impression. I've tried, oh, I'm going to say th two, three dozen different new makes, especially Scottish, Irish, German single malts. And um, I've tried the finished product. And I'm slowly getting a little bit of a mental grip on that. If I taste this in the new make, this turns into that. Through the barrel, the interaction, the additive additive um, maturations, it's uh, subtractive uh, mat maturation because of the barrel char. I can almost, in my brain now, kind of identify, pinpoint things that will there go. I don't have much experience with, um, with white dog and turning it into a finished product over here. So, on the nose, it smells totally different than a single malt does um, as new make. I get more chemical moments, a little bit more of the acetone, a little bit of a cereal moment, and a little bit of um, sassafras, maybe even licorice. Buffalo Trace. Ah, good. Eagle Rare. Oh. Good. Now, the jump is in my brain, through my senses here, not easy to do. Let's try this. 62.5%. This is barrel proof. Mm hmm. Corn, very sweet and yet bitter. Bitter is not right. There's a little bit of an acidity going on here. There's alcohol sharpness, heat, and there's a corn. I'm trying to explain. There's a corn syrup without the sweetness, and it has a tiny little bit of a 
dairy moment. It's not, it's like a, okay, I'm going to go for this. It's like a skim, an extra skim milk. Taking all the fat out of the milk and that skim milk moment a little bit. Okay. So, put some water in here. Come back to that in a moment. So, I have the flavor, I have the taste. Now let's try the Buffalo Trace. Exactly the same mash bill, exactly the same product here. Um, now, Buffalo Trace has been doing a massive expansion product project. So they've invested, and this is a big number, all right? 1.2 billion. So that's 1,200 million over a 10 year process to basically double the capacity. So what they've just done, this is only, what was it, 20, what, three years ago. Three years ago, they actually um, installed the new Vendome copper and brass um, copper column still. It's 40 inch, it's 40 feet tall. So um, 10 stories, well, not 10 stories. So you have what, eight, so five stories, six stories high basically and 84 inches. So that's over two, uh, it's over two meters in diameter. So that is going to be here are seven feet in diameter. I can do six, but I can't do seven. It's that massive, all right? So they had to install a whole new column still. They also had to therefore expand their, um, yeah, how do you deal with what's left over? The stillage. For every gallon or every liter of bourbon produced, there's 10 gallons or 10 liters of stillage that remains. So that means you put water in the grain, you put the grain with the water through there after the yeast has turned most of the sugars into then alcohol, and you have 10 liters left over every liter of alcohol produced. What do you do with that? Well, you build a additional $40 million uh, wastewater treatment facility. Whew. All right, so you have to add rick houses. Since 2017, they've actually built 10 new Barrel warehouses each with 58,800 no, 58, barrels each with a price 70 million. So it's 7 million per each. And it cost another 21 million roundabout in barrels and um, liquid to fill them. So you're going to invest here just uh, 300 million into those 10 new warehouses. They have four new 22 foot tall cookers for the corn, basically. They have four new fermenters. These four fermenters, they're big. Yeah, they're, thir they're 93,000 gallons each. So um, those, no, I'm sorry, since January 21, uh, they've added four. That's now um, a total of 24 uh, fermenters each with around 93,000. That's over 200,000 liters. It's amazing the capacity, the size, the scale of what's going on there at Buffalo Trace. And yet I still have the feeling they're still not producing enough. Uh, okay, good. Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare. Hmm. Very good stuff. 45%. Wonderful. Six to eight years are the barrels. One day they're going to be eight years again, but at the moment, six to eight. Still. Creamy. Nice. The Eagle Rare. Hmm. Now on both of these, I'm getting a lot of the aftertaste that I got here. I recognize very clearly this, which I often don't recognize with new make from single malt. Has anyone else had that experience? Single malt, new make, and single malt whiskey, big differences. White dog, 
bourbon. Very, very tight. I added some water to this going back here. Mm -hmm. mm. A little bit of water opens it up. That's nice. There are, I'm going to say like 60% overmatch or overlay match between these three products. Now, six to eight, ten years in the barrel in Kentucky, heat, air pressure, wood, expansion, contraction. You're adding vanillin, you're adding tannins, you're adding wood sugars, you're extracting from the alcohol through the um, char a tiny little bit of, um, of things there. You're mellowing it out. Um, the interaction in the whiskey, just letting it sit there for those years. Chemical co compounds can create and can decay and create other esters and other wonderful flavor profiles there. This is absolutely a joy to see the beginning, the product, and this. If you ever do a distillery tour, ask, hey, during the tasting, can we try the new make? I don't care if you're in Scotland, Ireland, Germany, America, wherever. Always try to get a little tad of the new make because that's the base. And then we can see what carries through to the final product. All right. So this was a learning video for me. This was an experience. This was a ah moment that I must admit I was not expecting that the new make, the white dog of a bourbon, I'm not saying the same for rye, I'm not saying, it's probably, probably gonna be very similar to the wheated uh, mash bill as well, but I don't have it in front of me, is often closer to the end product than a new make from single malt. Who would have known? Whiskey Jason here, you're hopefully learning because I'm learning and I'm trying to share this as a whiskey educator, as a whiskey uh, connoisseur, as a whiskey, Influence, I guess we can say whiskey tuber. Let's use that word here. Um, and uh, thank you very much, Buffalo Trace, for having this product. And thank you very much for actually having it in Germany. See you real soon. Whiskey Jason, don't forget to like, share, and tell others about this crazy guy over in Germany doing sometimes weird experiments. Bye bye.